All right, here we go. We're recording. Hi, friends. My name is Eric. I'm host of Talking with Fans People. And as you can see by his name, beside me sits Legends Fall. I have uh, been communicating with him mostly, usually, during live streams. But uh, we he's also sent me a couple of emails. And I listened to some of his music uh, the other day, yesterday, I guess. And uh, most importantly... I've come to kind of rely on him for SE insight when I struggle at it. So before we even get to the question of SE specifically, uh, what are your thoughts about eighth slot function and a person's and how that relates to their a person's ability to sort of recognize it consciously? Wow. Big question right off the hop. Okay, um, I think I, I I I don't know. I I observe in you uh, um, an unconsciousness around the uh, your your presentation, uh, your physical affect and stuff like that. It, it's uh, I can tell that it's not conscious. Uh, whereas for me. It's never unconscious, uh, no matter what emotional state I'm in or anything like that. I'm always at least aware of it. Now, I may let it go, um, but I will still be aware of it. So so are you saying you're paying attention to uh, basically how the physicalities of your presence are going to be F.E. read by others? <sighs> yeah. Um, I think it relates to uh, my an action reaction sort of thing that I'm just very aware of. Um, it, it may have something to do with FE as well. So, well, I would note this difference. I think both ENTPs and ESTPs may, on certain occasions, carefully choose what to wear, for example, or be very aware of their appearance. However, I think one thing that ESTPs typically don't do that ENTPs do a lot of is shit like this. They're sitting there talking and going. <laughs> um, that kind of stuff, which is real-time physical appearance stuff rather than clothes, which is you make the decision in the morning and then it lasts all day, right? <laughs> um, I think that definitely comprises the difference that's SE-linked because we, we can see examples of both of us prioritizing FE, but me being less aware of it in real time. Okay, so, but the thing is, do you feel... Now, I personally feel like SE is the function I understand. This is going to be I difficult. You can step on top of that, you know, okay. if you want. But I, I, yeah, I know this is not ideal, but that's because so we're maybe open that other door. You know? <laughs> From the other side. Yeah. Sometimes when yeah. when we're, I'm making something like this, I I have to prioritize that over the ability to pass through this passageway. Um, okay. So. Uh, how, what, what do you think about your own extroverted intuition? I think it's good in limited ways, um, meaning... Do you recognize when you're doing it? Now I do. Uh, I've always been very good in, in English class. Um, I went in and took a, I went into college for journalism and uh, I just absolutely aced the um, grade 12 advanced English. I'd been out of high school for three or four years and hadn't thought about it at all. So um, it's good like that. Like I'm much better writing than speaking as well. Um, it's a slower, you can think about it more, right? right? You can allow, you can allow yourself a little bit of time. Whereas when you're speaking, it's got to come out in real time. So um and I think it, we've talked about this before, it's in service of, I have to be trying to S-E-F-E something and then the N-E will just come as it's needed most of the time. However, if you just say to me, do some N-E, uh, I'm not in motion doing S-E-F-E stuff. So it's, it's gonna be a lot more laborious. I'm gonna have to stop and, and consciously try to generate something that way well what you said there about being more comfortable writing than, than speaking uh makes sense from the frame of reference that when you're writing something you've decided to communicate you decided to take some sort of action you probably know the ni 
holistic gist of what you want to communicate pretty clearly. And so you want to make sure that you successfully express that NI holistic gist, which means you're only going to have to call upon extroverted intuition or the extroverted intuition will sort of automatically happen as yeah. the task and requirements demand you to generate it, you know? Yeah. Or if I want to make a joke, uh, I might want to have some colorful words that are going to spice it up a little bit. I'm, I'm in motion now with SE and FE. I want to make an impact on the social thing. And that's when, and he's going to just come in automatically. I, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, right. it's just there bolstering me. Okay. So, so here's one possible distinction, or maybe it's not, is that I can never seem to catch myself in the moment of Essene when it comes to transitioning from doing meow to doing meow. So it's like, I might be sitting here watching cartoons. Then all of a sudden I'm up making a pot of coffee. What, where was that moment exactly when I seed the decision to stand up and go there or something? Are you conscious of that? Or is that? Oh, yeah. You are conscious yeah. of that. Big time. Yeah. Uh, I will sit there and the thought will occur to me and I'll decide uh, for sure if I'm going to do something or not or not do it. I see. I'm really unconscious of my decision making processes. So that's. That I think that making decisions has a lot to do with SE. Now, I will say about SE additionally that one of the problems I have with extrovert sensing and my current understanding of it, my current definitions of it, and everyone's current definitions of it, is well, almost with very few exceptions, there are a couple of exceptions, but with very few exceptions, ISFPs and ISTPs always say to me, yeah, but I'm definitely not SE tool based on all the descriptions of SE. Yeah, um... It, it seems a bit like SE tool is kind of a neutered version of SE or something like that. Or <laughs> you know, they're going to love to hear that, by the way, they're going to love, yeah. that. <laughs> especially the dudes. <laughs> yeah. I guess it could have been one with a better word there. No, um, I, that's fine. Just, but yeah, they all seem to report that. And I'm not really sure what to say about that. I know TI doesn't really work that way. I think I, use ti like a ninja and so do you and uh and so ti tool is very effective so i mean in general i think it's more difficult to talk about the perceiving functions than it is about the judging functions yeah uh, with ti and fi i think they're very easy and clearly defined and understood interested calculus disinterested calculus um does it does meow resonate with me and what i want or does meow resonate with universal fairness it's mm -hmm. it's a pretty good clear cut distinction. Um, SE is hard because, sort of definitionally, it's the part of attention that doesn't involve language. Right. So, expressing, I, mean, I can say, well, an example of SE is is digging a hole. But is that really right? I I don't know. Like, well, anybody can dig a hole, but having great awareness around, um, and sophisticated awareness around the physical world. For example, things like, um, you know, friction, strength, weight, uh, leverage, impacts. Okay. Things, that's all very physical. And I feel like I have a very, very sophisticated uh, understanding of all that stuff and can command it uh, extremely well. I just intuitively and that's a bad word in this context for that but uh but it, it it, it, it's a good word to include actually because the point is if you are trying to gauge people's type by making your own intuitive understanding of how intuitive they are you're going to mistype a lot of sensors as intuitives mm -hmm. um okay so let me the rug doctor thing i rented a rug doctor the other day i got it home and it wasn't working properly um and Without, again, not really making any decisions along the way, I find myself fixing the rug doctor machine. It takes me a good amount of time to fix it, but I do successfully fix it. But then I'm tired of working on working with the rug doctor machine, so I watch some cartoons. And so, before I know it, 
it's too late to use the Rug Doctor machine because it's like 11 p.m. and it sounds like a jet air, a jet aircraft landing. Um, and so then I return at seven next morning, seven in the morning. So I rented a Rug Doctor machine, and all I managed to do was fix their Rug Doctor machine. Is that an SE problem? No. <laughs> Is that a TE problem? <laughs> Uh, oh, so, okay. I misunderstood your question. I thought you were saying if you had better SE, would that happen to you? Yeah, I am kind of asking crazy. you that. If I it, Would you do that? <laughs> would you ever do that? I would never do that, no. I, uh, did, I, didn't, I didn't plan to do that, obviously. That wasn't my intention. <laughs> no. Uh, probably what I would do is bring it home and do it immediately i wouldn't rent it until i was ready to go probably i don't know uh i, I don't i can't see that happening to i me, was ready to go when i rented it the machine wasn't ready okay. to go when yeah, I rented so that's it. that's a different difference there for sure <laughs> uh, but the yeah. thing i should have done is gotten right back in the car taking it right back to the store and gotten a new one but i didn't feel like getting in the car again right then yeah okay i think yeah now intuitively that strikes me as being a metaphysical type rather than a physical type, just being not as connected to what's actually concretely happening uh, in in the physical world, maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the presumption was it's only going to take me a little bit of time to to find whatever it is that's clogging this. Okay. Um, but of course, I'd never taken apart one of those machines before. And even though I do have one kind of mechanical object that I'm good at, tinkering with and it's vacuum cleaners <laughs> but um even though i'm good at tinkering with vacuum cleaners it took a lot longer to do than i thought it would because i had to figure out how the whole system works because i'd never used that kind of machine before and then i, I don't know I, that's the thing it's like i don't do a good job of anticipating how long something's going to take i've noted that si types si one and two they recognize you can really only get one or two things done during a day i seem to think oh, i'm sure i'll be able to you know, finish this novel, rake the leaves, build a house out back, and feed the chickens by the end of the day. Yeah, the YouTube world will claim that NI is what knows how long things take. But maybe that's like in the universal sense versus the experiential sense. Maybe both of them do. So, Well, I would give an example of NI commenting on how long something takes, which is uh, the neighbor girl across the street. She has very a lot of very curly hairs and... Uh, I asked Rachel if she maybe if she thought she'd curl them with a curl curling iron, and she said no, that would take forever. Uh, she'd have to have gotten a perm, or it's natural. So that's an example. That could be SI or NI. Knowing, uh, I would think. I mean, how did you know that would take forever to curling iron that much hair? Have you ever tried to curling iron that much hair? I mean, I try to curl my hair with less curl than that, and it takes. Like an hour and a half. Okay, so you're basing it on your own uh, slowness with the curling iron? Yeah, but... Do you think a professional no, curling iron screw. user would be fast? She has corkscrews. Oh, corkscrews. Yeah, corkscrews are usually either perm or natural. Okay. Because, like, you, you spend the whole day. The, the, the perm takes, like, pretty much the whole day, too. It's chemicals. On the other hand, I can think of examples of Rachel doing something in a, a way that's incredibly inefficient and takes a long time unnecessarily. So it's it's hard to say that's really an NI thing. It must have something to do with TE. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing I hear a lot is what you referenced earlier, which is that SE is about caring about your physical appearance. But the thing is, I actually do care about my physical appearance a lot, just it's like when i say a lot it means like tuesday from two to four i was caring about my physical appearance then friday like all morning i cared about it then like sunday i cared about it in the evening so it'll be specific reasons why i'll care for about my physical mm -hmm. appearance. if i don't have one i won't care as opposed to just caring for its own sake because you value aesthetics like aesthetics to me are is possibly the most unquestioned value that I have. Uh, 
Possibly. I, I haven't I haven't f- thought about this enough to say that for sure, but it, it is way, way up there. Aesthetics. So, I, I don't so. generally think of, I mean, me, me too, for sure. But I don't normally refer to my own clothing and appearance as an aesthetics matter. Like, I tend to think of aesthetics as relating to stuff that's made rather than how you present yourself or something. I just think of it in terms of the quality of the the sensory experience that I'm giving that other people are getting with their SE or that I'm getting sensory uh, experience. That's funny because when I think about clothes, I just think when somebody looks at me, they will get the following in I because I've got a cool shirt on or something. And I don't think that it has anything to do with an experience that continues through time. It's just they garner meaning X and that's and we're done thinking about that. But I'm sure you're much more correct in your interpretation of this. So you're 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 tying meaning into it. So you you wanna know you wanna present that's SI in my opinion. Uh you wanna <sighs> It's almost like genres of dress, right? That's a, I think that's SI. Uh, I mean, for me, I think it's N-I-F-E with a root of the SI quality that links to it is SI people like to collect stories about themselves that feel good. Uh, the, okay. the, the higher up the SI, the more so that's the case. So, uh, for example, the other day, Rachel and I were at the Sphinx Mart, and it was like a week or two ago, it was at the end of a week, a steady week where we bought nitrous at this place like every day. <laughs> we were on a little nitrous bench. And um, on the last day of that week, we went in there. Said, Let's get another, we're going to get another box of those whippets. And then when we went to the cash, cash register, I said to Rachel, I turned around, I was like, boy, we sure have been making a lot of whipped cream. And I said it really, really straight and flat and deadpan. And I, I looked at the lady behind the counter and she's like, I'm like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and she laughed. I thought, that's that goes in my SI ego spank bank. You know, a, uh, a good joke where I made somebody laugh in public. I, I store those up. I re- revisit them sometimes, you know, for to feel good. Okay. So that's an SI thing. Do you do that about your own stories? If they're really memorable. Like when, but... you, when you won the Olympic gold while getting a blowjob? Absolutely, that would that would. Be. <laughs> um, okay, so the other thing that people talk a lot about SE is that SE people aren't clumsy and are good at sports. So okay, I, I've noted my daughter, who's an ESTP, is less clumsy than me for sure, um, and she seemed to pick up things like roller skating a lot faster, even though she's an adult when she started taking it up. But I would not call her good at sports at all. Is that just okay. a misconception about SE, or what are your thoughts? Well, in in, in her case, uh, it could be just a gender thing. Um, no, it's not always a gender thing. Some some females are extremely coordinated and, and powerful physically and all that coordinated. Um, so as far as self-reporting high SE users claiming that they're clumsy, um, I think it's projection in a way. And, and just to give you an example, there's a there's this kind of allegory about Wayne Gretzky, how he fell down in practice more than any other player. And, and it was so prevalent that there's stories about it. And is that because why? Because he's not a good athlete. He's not a good skater. Uh, obviously, none of that is the, is the cause. Now, I'm, I'm hypothesizing that the reason is, is he's doing things, he's pushing his, his boundaries and he's paying attention to more than one thing at the same time. He's, he's trying to expand his he's skill trying, set. Trying to get the, better by attending yeah. things that are too risky to attempt normally yeah. in a game. So I, I can remember uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, I, I've got a INFJ brother. And I, I was, he was over at my place for dinner and I gave him a glass of water and I just slammed it down on the table. Boom. And he noted to me that when he sets something down, he sets it down very gently and, and, and slowly and cautiously. Whereas I just walk over, boom. Now, because, what are, because you're not used to spilling shit. <laughs> you know, exactly. You're not used to putting things down on top of a piece of lighter and then having it fall over and spill. 
Exactly. Now, I assume that I'm very coordinated and not clumsy. So I'm going to be doing things with less attention on them, probably. Uh, I'm going to be doing things that require slightly more skill and paying less attention to it at the same time. Uh, because I've, first of all, SE hero, um, you know, we can, we can attribute a little bit of like a heroic attitude towards it. Uh, I think that I'm awesome at it. <laughs> so, uh, I drop shit, but it's probably because I'm not being cautious more than that. It is that I'm clumsy, you right. know, uh, you know, when I'm carrying things, I like to throw them around behind my back and catch them with the other hand. I just do shit. Like that. <laughs> um, that the other thing to note about this is, uh, I asked the ISTP I typed grace. She was self-reporting that she makes a lot of mistakes. Well, the thing about that is it's like, when we're talking about quantity and when we're talking about clumsiness or something, we're talking about quantity or frequency or, you know, you have your own perception of yourself as being clumsy or not. You think you have what you think other people perceive you as in terms of clumsiness and stuff like that. But the problem is what standard are you comparing yourself against? So if Grace was comparing herself against no mistakes, then I'm sure yeah. she does make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> but if she was comparing herself against me, she makes way fewer mistakes, but no matter how you define mistakes, because my basic approach is trial and error, whereas hers is not. Right. You can't have trial and error without the error. So there's something to be said here for your own expectations based on what you think you should be good at. Consciously or otherwise, if you're somebody who TIs all the time, you think whether you're aware of it, you expect yourself to be good at TI. So if you make a TI mistake, you're like, oh shit, it's really noteworthy. I should be better at this. And whereas somebody who doesn't give a shit about TI, they can fuck it up all day and they'll never report that they're bad at it. Whereas you make that one mistake, you're like, oh shit, I'm not that good at that. Well, it's, all, it's also a matter of how much context you have. Cause it's like, I used to think my TI was the shit until I talked to a bunch <laughs> of INTPs and then I realized, well, yeah, it's not really that good. <laughs> It's not as good as theirs. So, uh, you know, and then, it, but if you were to, if somebody were to ask me how good my TI was and I were to answer based on that conception of comparing myself against INTPs, I would give a totally misleading answer. Right. But I just mean specifically in terms of how many mistakes do you make at something, it, your expectation is going to calibrate to how you're going to project in the, this is, um, yeah, you pretty can. ubiquitous across all, all cognitive functions. If your expectation is zero, um, then every little mistake's gonna have, have a spotlight on it, right? Whereas if your expectation is I fucking blow at this anyway, and you just don't ever note when you fuck it up, then you're gonna report differently, and it's gonna be way miscalibrated for for each person, right? Right. The well, reporting. I mean, there's an interesting corollary here in terms of self concept with. Uh, with media creation. So it's a lot easier and more fun for me to make media that I expect myself to be bad at. For example, drawing pictures. I like drawing pictures because I'm not showing people pictures, hoping that they're going to think they're good pictures. I'm just, I'm just drawing for fun. I, I've, right. I've already declared myself bad at this. So it's very mm -hmm. liberating, you know, whereas mm -hmm. uh, making music is always a, are a battle. I, you know, I have very high standards for myself and I rarely meet them. And then I, you know, and I get, I go back and forth sometimes and, you know, it's a struggle if you care. It's not a struggle if you don't care. I got to stand up for a second to feed this cat right here. Troubles come sure. to eat. Okay, buddy. I'll get you something. Here you go, Mr. Man. You know, like two days ago, I saw them sitting right next to each other on the on the deck here. Peaceful as all get out. What happened? Oh, my dad just mentioned that uh, Pee Pee ran away when she saw. Oh, 
terrible. Um, noting my dad, it, I have a theory that the people with the best follow through are actually sixth slot TE, ESFJ and ESTJ. Thoughts? I think they love, absolutely love when they think that they can, then they frame something as a problem that they can solve and they will put this like fucking Frank's red hot, right? They'll, they'll put that on everything. <laughs> and I think so for that reason, they, uh, they will do a lot of shit, you know, more than I would do because I don't get any TE enjoyment out of it. So I need something that's going to validate on SE or FE. Well, you can, you, you can put TE on a lot more shit than SE and FE, right? Um, I mean, I, I would think, um, it, well, I don't know. The, the deal is this. It's like, I've noticed when, when my dad does forget about something or doesn't follow through on something, um, and I do catch him, like I say, but you said you were going to, he, oh shit. Like, you know, he, he, he's on, he has no defenses in that case. So it's like, that's the six slot thing is we don't feel like we have any real defenses when we fuck up in our six slot. And I think that's, okay. that's why the SE, the follow through aspect of it, because it, it's only, it's only true so far as he's following through on stuff that he's talked to me about. I don't know if he's following through on stuff that he's considered in his own head, but dismissed, you know? Right. So, I, I will tell you that if I tell somebody that I'm going to do something, I feel ultra, ultra compelled to do it. And I don't even know why I see other, I see the rest of the world just willy nilly canceling shit. I feel very compelled to, uh, to do what I said I was going to do. I, no clue why I only do if there's a very concrete timetable. So, uh, like I told my dad months and months ago that I would clean the roads, but it didn't happen until my dad said, okay, well, since we're getting the tile work done, let's get the roads cleaned before the tile guy comes. Uh, basically just, I, I don't know, just sort of an arbitrary reason, but nevertheless, it forced me into action. And now that I have a timetable, I don't want to, I, I'm like you in the sense that I really don't like to be guilty of having failed to follow through on something that I've done because I don't like to take criticism in that area. I don't like criticism in my eighth slot. And I don't take, like criticism in my sixth slot. Um, I accept criticism in my third slot, but it makes me sad. And criticism in my second slot is either quick, immediate, and correct, and therefore I just acknowledge that I made a mistake, or it's completely unfounded. <laughs> so, uh, criticism on my fourth slot, I'm self-deprecating. I, I know that's one difference. Uh, ESTPs don't seem to have the same kind of relationship with their own self-concept and their fourth slot function that ENTPs do. In other words, my self-concept includes the fact that I've got shitty, unreliable SI. I don't think ESTPs self-conceive themselves as having shitty, unreliable NI. No, I don't. I, well, sorry, let me be very specific here because I think my NI is is sharp as a tack, except where it's utterly useless, which is, and the 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 key thing is, if it involves me acting, like, uh, like, like, what am I going to do in terms of action? It's never an NI, like there's no NI vision to anything I do. I'm never projecting out in the future and then acting based on that. It's all SE motivated stuff. I don't um, think NI has much to do with that. I know everybody, you know? everybody talks about it being projecting into the future. I don't believe that to be the case. I, I think oh. that what, what an NI person does, let's say an NI person sees a couple get together. They know at that moment, those two are bad for each other. And then they say what they conclude from that. That's not going to last. They're not actually projecting into the future. They're knowing what is timelessly so and concluding that that timelessly so element necessarily will define the future. It's a little bit different than people frame it. Okay, well, let me give you uh, an analogy for what I mean by projecting out in the future or, or, or acting based on NI. So 
I'll use me and my INFJ brother. He's an NI Dom. If I go into a shopping mall, uh, if I see a store that I like, by the way, I got a question for you about shopping, but I'll save it for after this. I, uh, I'm, I'm so opportunistic, right? Like I see something that's interesting. I go and I, I could rifle through a store. Nobody can shop like me. If there's, if there's something in there that, that I like for a reasonable price, I will find it in short order. I'll go through the entire thing. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, uh, an entire Walmart, but, um, whereas, uh, an NI Dom, I think they know what they're there for and they're not distracted by anything. Um, I think this is, that's what I'm getting at, except you could put that on a longer timeline. They know where they're going and they're not, they're not pulled off course by shit. It's just distracting and appealing in the moment. They're, they're just like, no, I got my NI vision. I know where I'm going. This SE shit is not that appealing to me. It's repressed, right? Like, But they don't always have the NI vision is the thing. So if you look at Rachel and her relationship with this upcoming wedding we're going to for what happens when an NI dom doesn't know. Okay, what she does then is she gets a dress, tries it on, doesn't, it doesn't NI click, returns it, Gets a different dress, tries it on. It doesn't NI click. He tries various ensembles, doesn't like them, returns them, gets the new ones. They don't. He's waiting for her NI to click and say, that's it. So, a lot, you know, the, the other thing to remember is that NI is a receiving function. And if it doesn't have, if it doesn't receive the data it needs to know, then it just continues sort of fumbling with NE and SE uh, uh, rather than any TE, you know, if it's an INFJ. I think I'm what I'm getting at is what what are you what's going to determine how you act? Is it going to be your NI knowing, which I would consider repressed in me? Uh, m any given moment, I could um, be find something appealing in the moment, and uh, and you know, very very opportunistic. Um, I have no plan ever other than opportunism. Basically, I want. I want right now to be maximized in terms of, I'm, I'm going to use a word that I don't think you like, which is impact, but it's a broad use of the term. I like it. I'm fine with it. Okay. <laughs> I, okay. In fact, I define SE as primary, that's its primary value is impact or change. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Now, it, broadly speaking, impact, <laughs> um, it could be fun. It could be a gain of some sort, like financial gain, uh, social gain. It could be anything that's high impact, I'm going to be laser focused on that. And everything else is, is going to be going blur into the background. And, uh, and I'm always on the, I'm always looking for that shit. Right. Um, I, I don't, whereas, so you never, I, I come, you never come back from a yard sale and say, I wish I had gotten that thing. Well, yeah, no, if I want it, I'll, I'll get it. Because <laughs> uh, I, I, it's like, I went to a yard sale not super long time ago. I knew I needed a outside of the computer compressor, a, you know, a hardware compressor. Um, they had one at this yard sale for $25. But I didn't want to drive to the ATM, so I didn't get it. And I've been kicking myself ever since. Would you do that? Probably not, right? If I actually want something, uh, just stay the fuck out of my way because <laughs> I burn bridges, I destroy relationships. <laughs> just get the fuck out of my way. Now, hopefully, uh, I'm you know I'm growing out of this. You should have seen when I was younger, man. Holy shit. Um, yeah. So no, that wouldn't happen to me. If I actually wanted something, uh, I would make it happen for sure. All right, so like it, literally everything else would become un, un, insignificant and unimportant until I accomplished what I was doing. That's that's how my cognition works. So, well, in some sense, it's like when I went to that yard sale, I wasn't thinking about a compressor. You know, I was just going to a yard sale. It wasn't on my mind. It wasn't my priority for the day at all that I was going to deal with this compression issue. So it's like, oh, compressor. I'm not thinking about that right now, though. Why is that here? It's trying to make me think about that, and that's not on my plate of thoughts right now. Um, let's talk about music a little bit. You produce music. I listened to the two versions of the song you sent me, and uh, I think 
if they were both produced equally well, I probably would prefer the more more instrumentalized, more fully instrumentalized one. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> talk to me about your creative process a bit. How do you come up with stuff? How do you make songs? How, how do you write lyrics? Okay. For me, it's about the music way more than the lyrics. <clears throat> Did you see the video I sent you this morning? No, I haven't checked my email today. Okay, so I, as soon I, as I woke up, I stayed up I saw all night and video. slept all day. Okay, yeah. Uh, when I woke up and found your video, to me, I just filmed a, like a little five minute response to it, and, and I said, and I talked in it about my creative process a little bit, especially with the lyrics. For me, lyrics is just a component of the song that has to be there. Um, if it didn't, I wouldn't write lyrics. Right. I have a hard time writing lyrics. Now, I grind it out until I have something that's pa- and I passable for sure. Uh, do you have a concept of what the song is going to be about, and then try to make the lyrics, or do you just try? Do you know like the the, the vocal part to go meow 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 and then find words I'm that fit looking... those syllables? So to start at the beginning of my creative process, I just pick up my guitar and. Uh, if I, if I'm just you know fucking around and I <clears throat> play something that resonates, I'll keep it and I'll just keep fleshing it out until it's, you know, uh, say I play something and I'm like that's um, that's a verse part, instrumentally speaking, that's a that's a verse part, or a, and I'll try to get a chorus that goes with it. So I build the I build this the uh, the bones of the song first, and then I'll maybe ask you know what what mood of lyric that would work with this um, something like that. That's a very ni process. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the, the first thing when you're talking about it, you start on the guitar and you're playing around and you find something that sounds good and then you develop it, right? Mm-hmm. That that's also actually has it's like your a slot any start kickstarts the thing. But you're really just kickstarting it for as long as until you encounter the first thing that pops, and then yeah. then you stick with that thing that pops and work it out all the way. That's yeah. a very ni, NI process in in some sense because uh, I I have a lot of trouble like sticking with good ideas and finishing completing them. I, I, I don't. I, I don't let them go. Like something, if something resonates, I keep it. You know, uh, and I put it in. Maybe, maybe I don't even do anything with it, but I'll keep it. And then later, if something kind of go matches with it, I can see if they fit together. So uh, you've got a better a better relationship with your archive of ideas because you don't have such a vast overflow of them. Um, like yeah, because only the only the A plus ones do I keep, or at least A plus for me. I mean, I'm not you know. Right, right. No, I no, I get it. And that's the best way to, to for every musician, anybody who watches this and plays music, the best thing you can possibly do is compare yourself against yourself. Because if you have multiple instances of your own work, you can be objective and say, this is better than that. And here's why it's better than that. If you compare yourself against the shit you like best in the world to listen to, you'll be somewhat demoralized probably because you'll think if you're objective... I'm not as good as that. My music is not that good. So it's better to compare yourself against yourself. If you compare yourself against the shitty people, then you'll just be a hater. And you'll be like, I can't believe that shitty band made it on the radio and I'm still obscure. So the only real safe way to compare musically is to compare yourself against yourself. The more shit you've done, the easier that is. Right now, I feel like I've got really good clarity about which of my own things is good better than which of my own other things it usually takes me a while of listening to it before i settle on that but once i settle on it, it doesn't seem to change um okay so uh regardless of that tangent so do you play li- like is you, your infj brother play the drums or something no he does the same thing i do he's a singer songwriter so you don't have an actual drummer well we we have in the past I, i've played in you know probably a dozen bands i guess what life, i'm so. asking is so that wasn't a real drummer on that oh no 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 that was samples oh, okay cool it sounds good it sounded like a real drummer so i had to program that I, you know how it works yeah 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 but it, i also <laughs> know that when you program drums they don't always sound like a real drummer well, they're acoustic samples so 
even then they don't always unless you take the time and make sure you you oh you you, you did you channel. did a lot of yeah, work. Yeah. you did a lot of work on those drums yeah yeah I, I can't stand like this this is why i say aesthetics matter to me i can't stand uh like a tacky sounding drum or something like that i just i'd rather have no drums you know so um yeah I, the weird thing about music of course is as singer songwriters you and i would probably both love for a world that evaluated musical artists according to that metric we're gonna find out who's actually better so everybody thinks they want to be a, a rock star or whatever get up with your guitar or piano and sing your song with your voice and your guitar and piano so we can evaluate the song itself in fact, you can have another singer if you want. If you don't sing well, that's fine. But so we can just evaluate the song itself in its bare bones form, and be uh, and objectively compare various songwriters against each other on an even playing field. That would be fantastic. I would love that because I think I do very well on that playing mm -hmm. field, much better than I do on the playing field that does matter, which is producing tracks that that pop like they're chock full of carbonated beverage which is what I'd like to do but it's hard you know I think you've got a, a, a good body of very good melodies that's that's what I see from your music is uh, you've you've that's really the hard part man is writing the me the melody is the hardest part really I, I mean at least for me um, <clears throat> I can come in uh, like I, I would consider my my FJ, FJ brother, he's a better songwriter than me. Now he doesn't write pop music; he's more like progressive. Uh, he's anti dominant. What we want to say? So, uh, I, yeah, they have they they have and expect more patience than we do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he uh, he he was grinding it out doing progressive for so long, and finally he's like, okay, I'm gonna write some pop, some simpler pop sort of shit. But uh, when we collaborated, I noticed that he's a better songwriter than me, <clears throat> but I can uh, take his bare bones song and make it, you know, twice as interesting. I'd add a couple of guitar parts. Like I just have a better sense for that. Whereas he, he, he writes better songs. So hmm. I can tell you when I had an ESTP drummer, it was, it was heaven. He, he, he always played just the beat that was supposed to be there basically nothing no, you didn't unnecessarily fancy it it was just dead tight metronome fucking machine code perfect and uh he always looked like he was enjoying himself while playing the drums <laughs> so uh i think drums maybe are the most the most natural instrument for an se dom to want to take up early on in life I played drums when I was younger only because my friend threw a guy through a stucco wall at the mall and he had to sell his drum set. <laughs> I was like, I'll give you 300 bucks for it. He's like, I need the money, man. So anyways, I got this beautiful drum set. I don't even know what happened to that fucking thing, but I used to, I, I did learn to play on that set, so. Yeah, drums are fun, but drums are hard. I used to have drums at my house. They weren't ever mine, or not the good set anyway, but, uh, but you know drums are very difficult because it's it's not about ideas it's about perfect execution <laughs> right and and a lot of knowing like you said what beat goes where because right. it's the wrong beat <laughs> it's n-i-s-e it's yeah. know the right beat and play exactly that beat for the entirety of the song perfectly yeah because you only notice drums really when they're done wrongly and right. then you're like whoa <laughs> Occasionally, very... occasionally I'll go. Wow, that's some good. That's a good beat. But uh, right, yeah, I agree with if you. you typically, um, okay. So uh, this basically segues, I guess, into the the fact that type descriptions are the devil. If we were, to, if I were to list your behaviors and habits and stuff to somebody, and talk about how you're very articulate, you you write well, you're a song, singer songwriter, you produce a lot of different pieces of media, you have a YouTube channel, uh, you talk about cognitive functions and in great in great depth and with good insight and intuition, they would assuredly 
type you as something other than ESTP. But right. but talking to you right now, it seems very obvious to me that you're an ESTP. I'm surprised I typed you as ENTJ one time, apparently. <laughs> I don't know why I would have done that. You seem like an ESTP, just by, by affect. Yeah, I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about, so when you were asking me questions, I... I... I self-reported very badly. Let's I'll right. give you All right. I'll give you that because All right, cool. Well, I mean, it's obvious your TI from our conversations in the live streams. Um mm-hmm. and you seem probably I don't doubt that you share my frustration sometimes with the lack of prioritization of TI concerns in the world. Yeah. Can you talk about how how you experience that? how you respond to it or what uh, at this point I try my best not to think about it um, like you're talking like just the straight stupidity in politics and stuff like that I, I notice you're talking about that a lot yeah well the fact that people by and large have forsaken the notion that things ought to be justified by sensible justifications right yeah n- um so yeah we're we're kind of have been overtaken by te you know an orgy of te uh, in politics you could say um in society right now it's an orgy of te like i go to the supermarket and for the first time in a long time i completely forget my mask the lady just says oh let me let me get a mask for you sir and hands me one why what, wait <laughs> you, you, know, you were just standing here with me I didn't have one on is it really that so dangerous I have to have one on well that's not the point obviously the point is we're we're all supposed to look like we're following along with this <laughs> I don't wear a mask in public right. and sometimes sometimes they ask me to leave sometimes you know maybe if I'm ordering food or something that um I can't where I live we can't dine in anyway right now so uh, they might ask me to wait outside but they'll still serve me um, you know grocery stores banks some you know my bank will say hey you need to wear a mask and they'll give me one and I'll just hold it in my hand the whole time and they won't say anything so you gotta do the coach the coach maneuver put it on your chin <laughs> hang it off of one ear well it's like the, the coaches on TV have obviously been told look you have to wear a mask you're gonna be on camera so they do. They wear it one loop over each ear and the mask on their chin. And then mm-hmm. every once in a while, to show that they're a team player, they'll go like this. Pull it up for a second and then immediately pull it down to yell at a player again. Uh, that kind of shit makes me just insanely mad. Yeah, me too. It makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, I think my anger uh, comes less from a metaphysical place. My anger comes from the fact that I am expected to participate in this little shit show. Uh, that pisses me off, and uh, I just refuse to do it. Um, when I go to work, I gotta I gotta play the game a little bit, but. Uh, like if I go into a grocery store and they want to make they're going to chase me down after I politely just say no and keep walking if you want to chase me down and kick me out of your store go ahead uh, I'm 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 firm that I'm not putting a fucking mask on voluntarily I'm, not, I'm just not going to volunteer to do it um, that's they good. just refuse I, I, I admire you <laughs> um, what I do is wear a mask and and just follow the rules and then bitch about it on the internet see you're you're more angry about the metaphysical aspect of it i'm more angry i'm more adamant and angry about the physical now i'll argue about it i will the, the physical sure, aspect I'm... bugs me too i don't like the way the mask smells because i never watched no, but my notice you, you didn't put your foot down and just say i, I fucking refuse no, i didn't whereas that's the part that really gets me when I'm now expected to participate in this. Um, that's where I'm, that's what really gets me. That's what makes me angry. So, well, you know, Rachel and I, we've identified one store at least where 
the, the lady, the people who work in the store don't wear a mask, so we never wear a mask when we go in there. Uh, it's also FE2 and 3. It's like, um, everybody in California for such a long time was so just, woohoo, no matter how stupid it is, if it's health theater, we love it! And uh, it's just like, okay, I'm just, this is too hard to buck this. <laughs> that, again, it's, it's, I'm stuck in the metaphysics of it and not the physicality of it. Because the best idea I had, which I wish I had done, but of course I've got no real follow through on things like this, was to put a big sign that you hang from the bridge over the freeway that just said, let it run its course. If I put that there early, early on, who knows? Maybe we would have actually had a phrase that people would use that would have been effective. Because we didn't have any alternative to the, the bullshit. There wasn't a an alternative phrase that people could turn to and say, no, instead of your bullshit, meow. Let it run its course. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do it, and so I failed to help the world. Boo for me. Uh, okay, so how do you know when you're when you're doing well in life and when you're having some yeah like what like what makes the difference for you that's a broad qu i'm i'm a sensor you're gonna have to uh that's a broad question um i don't i'm not sure how to answer okay that. well I mean, when, when you think back from from this point from right now to back to your uh birth okay mm -hmm. can you think of a stretch of time during that when you thought wow i'm really killing it right now and also a stretch of time when you thought ah oh, shit's really going shitty right now yeah okay um bef you know i i think i recently went through a midlife crisis i just turned 41 about a week ago um i think about three years ago i went through a midlife crisis maybe two you do and not look story. 41, dude. You have all of your no. hair still. <laughs> <laughs> you, do not look a day over, right there, you do not look a day over 32. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. I can't believe you're 41. That's ridiculous. Well, you know, it's, somebody told me the other day that I looked 31. Specifically, I don't know why they said 31 and not 30, but that's what they, they told me I looked. This no, was you, in you do. You look 31 or 32. Okay. That would be my guess, if, and I would be confident about it, too. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm 41 as of May 30, 31, so... So what does your midlife crisis look like? I just blew up my entire life. There's nothing left of it. And, and that was about two, almost two years ago, I guess. It was a slow-moving thing. Um, so with, to answer your question, I was married. I had a, a very, very good job. It was high paying salaried uh, I just had a very easy life like I had a four minute commute to work I had I was taking two hour lunches I was making a boatload of money easy work you know I was the boss uh, and I was married to a great great girl uh, it, there was it was just too easy for me apparently or, <laughs> um, I, I was wondering to do the part where However, some awful thing made me blow it up. Now just you just got tired of it. I believe this started when I was, you know, 37 and a half, 38 years old, um, which is about when you're supposed to have a midlife, somewhere between 37 and 44, 45 ish. So I was right on time, um, and it, and you know that's kind of how I got into typology. I was like, why did I just do that? And I was like that's that's what spurred me getting into typology i was trying i was trying to understand myself right I, yeah i think midlife crises are for uh ni people not for si people i don't i never really understood the term because for me i'm always and always will be the compilation of all of these sequence of events and decisions both bad and good and things i've made and stuff that have come before it's like that's just who I am. Is I'm the pile of, of of Eric refuse left behind as my agency moves through time. Okay. So it wouldn't make sense for me to have a midlife crisis because it would mean forsaking who I am as a as a product of of something that accrues over time. Okay, I kind of viewed it as 
something that you maybe do to yourself unconsciously to um, to force growth um, and maybe some introspection and stuff like that. <clears throat> mm. I don't know. I'm just making that up. That's what it seems I mean, like it, to no, me. Well, I mean, the thing is, that's probably one phenomenon of it. Another is what, like, people from the outside might have said, Eric's having a midlife crisis. What really happened was Eric's second wife left, and he was left to his own devices to do what he wanted. Right. Like, I don't think a midlife crisis is something happens to you. I think it's something you do to yourself or, or to your life or whatever. So right? did you get a fancy red sports car? Isn't that the stereotypical thing to do? Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. No, I didn't get a sports car. But, um, you know, I, I blew up my life. That's what I did. I, and it was in not not just one thing. It was, I, I, it's almost, looking back, it's almost like I set up to do it on purpose. So. It would seem to me, though, that the ESCP is especially well positioned to uh, not dwell in regret or remorse. Thoughts? Yeah. I mean, intellectually, I know what I did. Um, and the, the losses that I incurred, uh, for sure. But am I depressed about it? No. Um, Sounds like you be... were countervaluing TE. Uh, maybe uh i'm uh i'm more depressed in real time as in whatever's happening right now if it's not good maybe i'll be depressed but if it changes i'm not depressed anymore you yeah, know so i'm the same way that's that bipolar i think uh, yeah i do i do have some regrets obviously from the past but right. they don't really play out as emotional experience for me right um, okay, so let me ask you another broad kind of question. What are some observations that you've made in watching and interacting with me and live streams and stuff about some of the differences between ENTPs and ESTPs that maybe people wouldn't immediately jump to think of? So the... I can't do what you do ideationally, for one not even close um I, I can just learn from it and pick it up and then incorporate it into ti um which which is great you know i get a lot from your channel for that reason uh just like if um if we got in a boxing match i'm probably would kick your ass uh <laughs> not that i would want to I, I, I have already i've already uh I put you on the list, by the way, of people that I won't box against, including, <laughs> including it has two people on the list, has Taylor and you. I think I'm putting Gen Exiel on the list, too, because he has a lot of wrestling experience, and he used to do martial arts and stuff, ISTP. In general, mm -hmm. if I'm going to fight an ESTP, I'd like it to be a woman. Right. <laughs> well, I don't mind getting so, beat up by a woman. I don't want to have a boxing match with a woman that I could beat up, though. That would be yeah. that. That's a no-win situation. You got to go up against a chick that's tougher than you. It's a win situation right. if you get knocked out by the chick, but it's not a win situation if you knock her out. Yeah. So I would say uh, for an ENTP's <clears throat> real value uh, would be in in doing what you do a lot of, which is to create the map. Whereas I am much more capable at actually executing stuff related to the map I would you are say. an executive type yeah so i'm i'm focused in what's real and concrete and physical in front of me and working with that adapting around that physical thing rather than i think i mentioned this in chat rather than only referencing the map all the time i'm referencing what's in front of me so that's a difference yeah, um, makes I'm you, still I'm still referencing the map. Obviously, your to, way to makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do what you do either. So, um, you know, there's there's co cost benefit to yeah. each. So, any is frustrating because I can I can do some pretty impressive parlor tricks, right? But at the end of the day, there's not a big market for parlor tricks. So it's like, it, when I'm successful, it's because I've successfully constrained my extroverted intuition and forced it into an NI identity. Uh, 
I was I will note one thing I wanted to mention about songwriting is I do have an instance of a song that I made up just the just the melody of it um, a long long time ago and then turned that one part that I kept singing for like 10 years in my head occasionally into a song like 10 years later or 15 years later or something so it is a good idea to do what you're, you're doing what you say you do absolutely I would I would be all over that like if something didn't leave if I didn't forget about it I would assume I gotta do something with this because I didn't know what the other parts were yet that was the problem right I kept waiting for the other parts to come to me and they never did I just kept singing what's the matter with Dan he's a terrible man is he na 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 and that's it's like all I had and I just kept singing that but that's the point it, in I ignoring why did it take me that long to say, hey, I should work on this instead of just waiting for it to naturally manifest or something? Right. Um, okay. Uh, what are some other topic areas uh, that you thought we might talk about or would like to talk about or think are interesting uh, that we could take advantage of to move forward in this conversation? So I thought what you wanted was to try to figure out how to test for SE. <clears throat> no, I just... Is that... No, that's no, we much, that's to... much too practical, Legends Fall. Right, okay. All right, Come all right. on. But how do you test for it? You can't. I don't think you could... Well, sorry. Let me... As far as skills, I mean, that's going to be... That's out. We're not going to be able to do that, right? The skill of SE, not virtually anyway. Unless well, how about this? Was this a good skill test for SE? Um, when people email me to, to ask me to schedule a typing session, I say, okay, you got to pay a hundred bucks, but you also have to find me a MP3 of a recording of Jingle Bells that was recorded before 1943 and include it in an email. It is a totally random, unnecessary task and see how long it takes them to complete it. Okay. Well, I can tell you that if anybody could do that, I would be among the people that would be probably more most likely to be able to do it um at, at least the way that i can conceptualize if you that. knew you wanted the typing session and you yeah. encountered that small barrier would it hold yeah you, would it hold you up at all no right. um i, no, think, I sure. think infps it would take them three months right okay but i mean that's a terrible way to t test it because that means i won't get any business from them right <laughs> But okay, so skills is probably out, but you can do values. And now then you're running into the problem of self reporting and people doing it badly. Uh, but if you, you if you really simplify it by contrasting it against something else. So I have noticed about myself. Now you'd, you'd have to verify this by checking with uh, some other ESTPs. I trust your TI. Okay, your objective is so uh, critical. Yeah. Um, I'd still want to verify though I, I, by asking. I, I don't know if this is t uh, unique to me, or if it's universal with SE. But I tend to prefer movies and books that are set in this reality that we live in rather than a made-up one. I can't. I, I find that like childish a little bit and stupid. Um, that's not to say I will never engage in that, but I definitely have a strong preference for stuff set in this reality. Uh, so that would, would be one way to I th contrast. I would think any versus SE is to ask them about what sort of uh, fictional. Uh, Do you like John Wick? Uh, what are some, what are some right. of your favorite movies? Well, my, the, my screen name legends fall is from the movie legends of the fall. Okay. I think that's a great movie. Now, it's not typically the type of movie I would like. But I don't think I've seen it. I'm not a genre person. Can you name some I movies like, you like that I have heard of or do know or have watched? Uh, I liked Fight Club. Um, that's good. Yeah, it was a good movie. Um, I could tell you what I don't like. What uh, don't you which like? Is maybe unexpected is like brainless action movies where it's just explosions and car chases. I mean, I, See, I tend to like those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I loved all the John Wick movies because all the John guys... Wick was well done. I right. Thought. I mean, I do, they do have to be well done, but when they are well done and there's enough action, like the pacing of it's done right. 
I love uh, I love action movies. Do you know what 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 saves John Wick is that it lacks stupid machismo and it's it's presenting a really good aesthetic at the same time, a really good aesthetic. So you it, know, it's from a graphic novel, I think. Yeah, so it's saved by those things. If you had put Vin Diesel in there uh, instead, yeah, and he, it. <laughs> yeah, be really, it would be fucking stupid at that point. So it all works cohesively, uh, and it, it's a good package. I think of any brainless action movie, John Wick is probably one of the better ones. Okay. Who do you think makes a better tough guy as an actor? Patrick Swayze or Kurt Russell? I don't like either of those guys. <laughs> oh, we were just watching Escape from New York, a 19, okay. 1981 John Carpenter film. Stars- okay, I'm going to say Kurt Russell because I don't think Patrick Swayze could pull that off. Maybe. Well, maybe he could. I don't know. The, you two see what I see. Okay. There's nothing masculine about Patrick Swayze. Okay. Okay. Let's just let's just cut to the chase. I, I don't understand why women find him attractive or think like he's some sort of sex symbol. He seems so fucking soft to me. Whenever I look at the guy, I think, "Oh my god, that guy is so fucking soft." <laughs> Kurt Russell, I just think, "Oh, he's a, he's he's, he's a, a little goofy, he's an but actor he's actor doing bad. his thing. He's an actor doing his thing." I think about Kurt Russell. He seems a little bit goofy to me, but he's at least masculine. I would say. I would say that Kurt Russell is an fe actor, and Patrick Swayze is an fi actor. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't like him. Yeah, that's why I don't like him. Either. It's like Joaquin Phoenix. I don't like Joaquin Phoenix. Right. Yeah. Hey, there's something wrong with him. I think it's his FI. Anyhow, he, he's probably an FI Dom. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. Okay, I, so, think. I, I think so too. So, what other? I think he's an ISFP. What other? Uh, what other movies don't you like, or TV shows do you dislike? Ah. Uh... Okay, this is a funny story. Have you seen Grey's Anatomy? Uh, okay, I've seen like an episode or two of it. Okay, I can't watch that show, but because it, it makes me want to go Incredible Hulk. <laughs> I don't know why. It's the dialogue, I think. <laughs> now, here's how bad it is. One time I was sitting with my back to the TV, and it was on in the background. I didn't know it was on, and I could feel myself wanting to punch a hole through my computer screen and I didn't know why. And I turn around and fucking Grace and Adam's on. I'm like, oh that's why. That's your Do you have a it, girlfriend? Right now? Yeah. Uh complicated I guess. I no, I guess. Alright, the thing I'm asking, I guess we, we could ask about maybe your old relationships or whatever, but are there certain kind of girl shows that females in your life watch that you just cannot stand? Like uh, I can't watch um, Real Housewives. They they just yell at each other the whole time. Um, it's obvious. It's too obviously fake. No, that's like the literal. That's a literal trash. I would never ever <laughs> consider that. I can't watch The View either. The View I find oh absolutely torturous. It's just like somebody just hit me in the head with a hammer rather than maybe yeah. watch this thing. Yeah, just fucking shoot me. That's that's. Uh, <laughs> That's hell right there. Um, You know, my ex-girlfriend used to really be, really like Dr. Phil a lot. And Dr. Phil, it was hit and miss. Sometimes it would make me furious because Dr. Phil would be saying some stupid ass shit that pissed me off. And sometimes uh, I got the Effie satisfaction that it's trying to sell to its audience, which is Dr. Phil scolding somebody for not being a good enough team player. It's such an F- S-I-F-E thing, right? It's like, um, the people who really enjoy that show, they want to see the the crazy acting person get told off by Dr. Phil. That's why they watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you ever play live shows? I used to. Um, I've, uh, I kind of wore myself out. I... I uh... <clears throat> I recorded two studio albums in a short amount of time. And then I did, I must've recorded about 30 songs. Um, and, and I don't, I don't do it half ass. I do, I give it my best. And I did this all in a very short amount of time. 
And I remember immediately following that, I didn't pick up a, a guitar for almost two years. I didn't even, I just sat in the corner collecting dust. I, I wore myself right out. Um, now, I've been playing again for a couple of years, but obviously uh, um, I have, like, not obviously, I guess. I haven't written anything new. I haven't recorded anything. Actually, I sent you uh, a cover, which was just me and my acoustic guitar. Um, it was the very first thing I sent you. Um, what's it called? I can't remember. Do you remember it? it just me and an acoustic guitar. You said, no, "Oh, you're, you're quite good." I will. Uh, I have to search my email now that I know that you were you. Yeah, <laughs> the first thing I sent you, uh, I thought that was a, a really good vocal performance on my part, maybe the best that I've done. And then that other one called uh, "Scars." Uh, I've, all, I've sent you three things. Your vocals sound really good on the acoustic version of the thing you that we I sent you to reply on too. Yeah, not and they don't not sound so bad on the other one. They're just too big in the mix at first. And yeah, for they sure. Need a little bit maybe, a, I, probably just too big in the mix. But it maybe a teeny bit of reverb. But uh, well, the, it sounds okay until you play the acoustic one right after. And you're like, oh, that's what good production sounds like. And then you're like, you realize that the first full band version was muddy and. Oh, and a it, it's so hard. I, I mean, yeah. do you find producing music difficult? Are you able yeah. to consistently get the same results that you expect from the same processes you're using? I no, well, I don't have a process. I actually do it. Uh, I try to, you know, do it tailored to each thing. Uh, I haven't. I don't think I've done enough of it, maybe, to have a process that I go through. And I also don't think you could do a one size fits all. I think each song requires its own approach. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Here's a couple of things I concluded that are kind of universal. One thing is when I'm multi-tracking, I have to remember get each individual track in the multi-track at its biggest that it can be comfortably where you want it. So in other words, I have to remember to optimize each of the individual tracks within the multi-track, then turn them down within the multi-track. If you if it sounds fine in the mix in the multi-track, but it's at zero dB because you've never compressed it, it's going to get lost in the mix. Okay. So that's one thing I've determined. And <laughs> the other thing is, <clears throat> for me anyway, I'm better off doing as little shit to the the individual tracks besides loudness and volume management compression and optimization and stuff um until as late as possible so yes right now it seems to me like maybe i should put some wah on that guitar track don't do it just leave it playing until you get all the pieces you're gonna get and together and then save that and then maybe you can experiment with some effects and stuff because generally what i found is the more I get myself dug into an effects hole, the worse shit ends up sounding. That's just my observations. Do you have any observations about music production for our music making friends that might be interesting? Uh, right yes, I would say you can go down a rabbit hole of losing all reference to what it should sound like because you're only listening to that one thing take a break and listen to something else and come back to it. It might shock you how off you were and you gotta, you know, so, so that's something I would say to be cognizant of. That's good advice. Uh, when you're in the middle of producing something, listen to something else that you know is produced well and see. If yeah. You're... AP it. Just be like, okay, that's what this, it should sound like. What does it sound like? And you know, yeah. Do you do, do an AP? Do you do EQing to give space for the individual pieces in the? Yeah, I try to slot stuff in. So, like, if something is primarily, like, say, guitars are occupying a certain frequency frequency band, and they're just maxed out in that frequency band, I will maybe cut that out of something that's competing with it. What you know, is I don't want to ruin it, uh, but you know, you just play around and see what you can do yeah. and, and try. To a little goes a long way with the queuing, but I think it's important yeah. to do some oh, yeah. of that stuff that you're talking about right there. Very light touch, yeah. Um, the most concrete suggestion I would have regarding that particular area of analysis is cut your non-vocals that are 
mids to trebles, basically guitars and stuff, pianos and stuff like that. Cut those a little bit at a narrow, at a narrow kind of cut around 2K to make room for the vocals. It could be a little lower if you're a deep voice man. It could be a little higher if you're a chick or a high voice. Right. Chick, but around 2K. And that'll make the vocals pop without making it really ch sound any different in any other way than that. So that's kind of a, one trick I would check. Okay. So um, this has been an interesting and uh, wide ranging conversation. And I am thinking I want to end this video right now. And I, uh, so let's say goodbye in this video because it's about video length, which is say an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so thank you all for watching. And don't forget to eat plenty of Legends Fall brand homemade human breast milk cheese on sale now at legendsfall.com. Also, go to my merch store and buy some of my t shirts and stuff.